Hey guys, we're around Christmas and I believe it's time to give you a very nice gift. For the first time on this channel, I'm going to show you something extremely popular, modern, fashionable, and that can be used even for top players. So, as you know, one of my most interesting and most entertaining and here uh, videos that got to, like the biggest number of clicks and views was Vienna Gambit for White. And uh, I was searching something the other day and found the following variation. Uh, the variation that was released into practice by Grandmaster Dubov. You know that Carlsen took him in his camp for his match against Nepo because Dubov is someone who has great analysis, very creative guy and uh, very surprising out of the opening. And there are rumors that uh, in one of those crucial games, he was the one who came up with some uh, of the most crucial ideas, and uh, uh, that certainly that certainly hit Nepo so bad. So uh, I want to talk about e4, e5, knight c3, knight f6, and believe it or not, not f4, but d4. It's a brand new line. The whole 2020 and 2021, actually. Uh, this year, uh, it's been used by uh, Dubov, Nepomniachi, uh, especially Mamajarov, and Grandmaster Ponkratok, who was one of the first guys uh, who used this opening with white pieces. What's the point? After e takes, queen takes, looks like central gambit, and when they play knight c6, you can easily bring your queen back to d3. And what's the difference? in comparison to classic central gambit, e4, e5, and when you go with d4. There is a huge difference, because in this variation, uh, they just take on d4, and when you play like queen takes d4, knight c6, you do not have time to go with queen d3, because they equalize on the spot with d5. That's the difference. And here, when you include these moves, knight c3, knight f6, and then d4, the situation is completely different because when they take, no more knight d5. So after knight c6, queen goes to d3. I want to point out a couple of very important things behind this queen and, d, uh, queen and d3. It, unlike central gambit, where the queen stands on uh, e3, it still gives you possibility to go with the bishop on g5. This queen can still go on g3 onto the king's side. And you get an option of doing long castle, whether you develop your dark square bishop with bishop d2 or bishop g5. So, time to check the most interesting things. I believe the one that we shouldn't fear of is g6. Uh, the Rabaili grandmaster from uh, Azerbaijan played against uh, McShane and played like, or maybe he's from Armenia, apologies, bishop g5, h6. Uh, of course, he immediately pins the knight, threatens knight e5, followed by queen c3. Had to play h6, g5, bishop g3, d6, castles, and now he just threatens to go with e5. Very nice trick, very uh, refreshing idea. You are just fighting against e5 so fast, and after bishop e6, knight on f3, keeps on developing his pieces and breaks these pawns on the king's side. Has to play g4, knight e4, I like this move. Uh, if knight takes, he would just get a great initiative. So he had to play bishop g7, uh, knight takes e6, played bishop e2, threatened the pawn on g4. And after h5, put the king in safety with a king b1, played queen d2, uh, just put his queen on e1 uh, for the time being. And after this, uh, played uh, g takes g takes wanna go with a rook f1 and with the bishop pair he had an absolutely fine position especially because black couldn't play anything else but a long castle he played rook to f1 played afterwards bishop f2 and won the game just like you see bishop pair healthy bone structure and uh, I, I just say a long term advantage without any uh, weaknesses in his camp guarantee uh, white here pretty comfortable game and he managed to win this game in 10 moves from here apart from g6 uh, they can also go with bishop e7 bishop e7 is let's just say passive hyper solid approach but i'll show you two games 
For example, after bishop f4, here your bishop goes on f4, and you now threaten to play e5. They gotta go with d6, along castles with tempo, and play f3. That's what I like about this system. So when you place your bishop on f4, you threaten that e5, uh, gaining a lot of space and tempo. They gotta go d6, and now you just go with the typical English setup, f3, g4, and doing the attack. I'll show you one game. Anna Muzicic, one of the strongest uh, uh, women in the world, uh, played against um, uh, I am, uh, the, this I am played knight h5, brought this bishop back, and bishop g5. Looks like black is about to equalize since he manages to exchange the dark square bishops. No big deal, king b1, bishop e6, queen d2, forcing an exchange. Has to take, and now, since the knight stands on h5, g4 with tempo, knight g2 with tempo, and here you can choose g5, h4, knight g3, knight f5, knight f4, and so many things where you have just an upper hand on the king's side and uh, we're in the driving seat. Apart from that, instead of knight h5, they can play classic bishop e6, g4, a6, king b1, b5, and h4. Reminds me of all those Sicilians and Philidor positions where you just go like this. Bishop c4, queen d2, exchanging. Uh, this is Grandmaster Pavlidis from Grace who played this game. Absolutely fine game. Brought his queen back to d1. Played g5 to crush with g6 afterwards. And that's it. He managed to win this game in uh, eight moves from here. Because uh, a razor attack is on horizon. Queen d4, h6, or knight d2, knight g3, knight f5, or just uh, knight e2, knight d4, knight f5, or just stuff like that. Also, I like this queen d4 followed by h6. Instead of fifth move, bishop e7, they can go with d5. It's one of the most challenging moves. I want to show you two moves. Mamajarov played bishop g5 in one of the games, and after d4, knight d5. But I'd like to show you bishop f6, knight d5, f5, castles. Reminds me of those crazy Sveshnikov uh, Sicilian positions, you can play like this. It's double-edged type of the game. Pretty open king for black. Although, my vote goes to bishop f4. Uh, that's the engine's strongest move. And now they can play a couple of alternatives. For example, they can go with bishop e6. And this game was played in a uh, recently finished uh, European team championship where I was, uh, where I was uh, as a Serbian team captain, long castles. And in the case of pawn taking, you just uh, bring your queen to g3 onto the king's side. They cannot develop this bishop. Queen is under the attack, and after queen e7, bishop e2 to stop knight h5. You have ideas such as uh, king b1 to solidify yourself, knight b5 to threaten on c7, and on top of all that, knight h3 to go with the knight g5 afterwards. Or even in some positions, knight f4 if you play bishop g5. Perfect game for white. And the game was knight e4, uh, white captured, and played queen e4. Position where you already, <clears throat> sorry, where you already put your king um, on the king's side, uh, where you threaten the queen, where you have the queen centralized. This has to be perfect. And after bishop d6, unfortunately, uh, this young Slovenian guy uh, played against uh, Foreman from Switzerland missed almost the winning move. Can you find it? It's novelty here. Bishop a6. So this is for you to analyze at home, to maybe trick somebody with his tricks and with his novelties, but he was supposed to play like this. Knight b4. That's another option here. Uh, usually all these top GMs played queen e2, but I believe queen d2 is good enough. Because in the case of knight takes c4, you just capture, trade the queens off, and play much better queenless type of middle game. Same thing happens if d takes c4. You just have to take on d8, play long castles. A king is kind of weak. Your king is safe. You always can go with this. c7 is weak. Bishop c4 will come with tempo. Knight e4, uh, sooner or later, uh, this pawn on e4 is going to drop, and you're just fine. All things considered, when you play bishop f4, looks like d takes e4 has to be made, where you take. And after knight d8, I'll show you a game between Dubov and Wesley Saw. Played 
last year. So pretty recent game. Uh, I believe it was rapid game. After Bishop before, this guy played long castles, threatened the knight. Wesley saw played knight c6 and Dubov played this one. And somehow, for some reason, Wesley saw completely missed the trick. And after bishop c3, completely forgot about this nice tactics where Dubov was winning in 11 moves. Can you imagine? In 21st century, with such a weird opening, third move d4 in Vienna opening, you're just winning in 11 moves. The thing is, uh, he had to play bishop g4. F3 takes, G takes here, even though knight F3 looks way more logical, just to get a tempo and bishop E5, threatening on F6, going with some other uh, typical developing moves, and white looks better. Also, this bishop E5 doesn't only threaten on F6, but also defends this knight on C3. So just like you see, all these variations are very, very tactical, with lots of very... I'd say new attractive ideas for white and a very unusual type of games. Uh, then we have a fifth move, bishop c5. Uh, those are uh, the most, uh, uh, most common moves in practice. I'm talking about bishop c5 and bishop b4. And on bishop c5, they just want to go after the f2 pawn. So when you go or when you want to go for a castle, I'm talking about the queenside castle, you would have problems with the f2 pawn, but it's not a big deal. I'll show you a crucial game for this system, Mamajarv against Adams. Mamajarv played bishop f4. Once again, uh, we're developing this bishop to go with the long castle. And uh, Michael Adams uh, played short castle. Mamajarv plays f3, which is good, uh, because he defends pawn on d5, and at the same time preparing himself for long castle. Also, uh, he's just uh, removing this pawn from being hanging on uh, f2 by the bishop on c5, so it's good. Uh, I analyzed positions with d5 because it was played a couple of times. Then you just take by knight, take by queen, knight before. You give up uh, this pawn on a2 for having the central pawn. This is good position according to the engine, and you play c3. I believe that most of your opponents here would go with knight a6. They have to play some weird knight c2. You play bishop d3 and you're still better. But I absolutely have no uh, doubts that most of these guys would play knight a6 where you just take and play knight e2. Uh, in a position where they have broken pawn structure and this pretty useless uh, bishop here because uh, we have king d2 to solidify ourselves knight d4 rook a1 or rook e1 afterwards pawn on c7 is hanging what is so much in famous game between mamajarov and adams was d6 played long castle bishop e6 and here mamajarov made quite a nice move uh, michael adams was threatening knight before going after the pawn on a2 he played queen d2 so he's avoiding knight before and solidifying his approach. And this now reminds me on a typical Philidor open defense where the bishop stands on e7. And you just know, we play g4, h4, and so on. You have, for example, similar kind of positions analyzed in one of the first videos on my channel, how to play against the open Philidor. Nigel short system, I called it something like that. Knight d7, he just wants to go with the knight on e5, h4. You get some space, but it's not about only getting space. It's about pushing this pawn up to h6. It's about pushing <coughs> this pawn to g5. It's about having and giving your uh, yourself possibility to jump with this knight on uh, g5 or sometimes on f4. Knight c on e5. No big deal. He just wants to play bishop c4, knight c4 at some point. If you ask me, more likely bishop c4. Knight h3. a6. Is willing to also go with the attack. Mamajar played bishop e3 to trade off the dark square bishops, and not just that, to open and release f4 square for the knight. Adams played b5, Mamajar jumped with the knight, and it's not only about harassing this bishop, but also controlling the d5. Adams played uh, bishop e3, queen e3, and played knight b6. I especially like, from positional point of view, the following move for white. It's b3. b3 is great because it limits the knight on b6 and also 
uh, limits all kind of uh, approaches related for the c4 square. So he played Michael Adams played before 95 and played c5. My major of capture played 96 and played f4. I'm pretty sure what happened in this game that uh, Michael Adams at some point blundered one tactical shot by Mama Jarv. So after knight g4, queen f3, 95, Mama Jarv played queen h3. Adams captured, and I'm pretty sure that he completely forgot about e5. Boom. Queen on b6 was hanging, d6 was hanging as well. You threatened bishop c4. At some point, d file is going to be yours with a rook d7. Adams played king h8. Bishop c4, you still cannot touch it. So after this, knight e5, rook d6, of course. After rook d8, uh, once again, knight e5, rook takes e5. And uh, after, actually, after h6, went with the queen g6, threatened the knight, queen c7, played bishop d3, threatened checkmate, and Eventually, after king g8, played e6. What a beautiful, easy game by Mama Jarv. Uh, I like it so much. It was, I believe, 25 minutes per player. So they even had a decent amount of time to think of, the, you know, like during the game and to come up with like pretty strong moves. I'm talking about uh, probably one of the best players in the world. So uh, definitely, this is the line to go with. And uh, finally, what majority of guys do in this position is bishop b4. So we've seen so far uh, following moves. We've seen g6 fifth move, bishop e7, d5, and bishop c5. What I especially like, uh, now let's take a look at the fifth move, bishop b4. But before that, what I especially like about this modern uh, fashionable variation in the Vienna opening is how you easily uh you know like switch from i don't know having that queen on d3 into the english type of positions with a typical king side attack in the pawn store or just switching your queen over to the king side with the queen g3 and afterwards just doing some stuff on the king side or queen g3 bishop f4 going with the e5 breaks and stuff like that i very much enjoy these positions for white after bishop d2 castles castles once again, in those classic central um, gambit positions, they would just have an opportunity to play some rook e8 and to take on e4 or to play d5. Here, that option doesn't exist. And after you play long castles, they have to go with either d6 or rook e8. d6 happened in a game between Nijat Abasov and Shan Sargisyan. 2650 guys. After f3, bishop e6, g4. Boom. We go with nothing else but a typical pawn storm. 97, 95. Just jump here. You're happy when you exchange these light square bishops here even more because you can capture. You can capture by queen, you can capture by rook. I like by both because capturing by rook can give me an opportunity to, I don't know, go with h4, place rook g2 afterwards and go with the attack. This guy played knight c5. Nijat Abasov played queen e3. Bishop d5, he takes d5. Rook e8, queen goes in safety and also threatens this bishop. They gotta take. You gotta take by queen, of course, because rook on e1 would be possibility. And after knight e5, can you imagine that in this position, in like six moves, he was completely winning. He pushed the g5 pawn, played h4, put the king in safety, king b1, Played h5, h6 to weaken the dark squares. And now he just needs some queen c3 and f4. And when the guy played knight g6, played knight e2, closing like both of these rooks on the file, uh, moving, for example, this knight to g3, h5, or f5, or maybe knight c3 harassing the queen, or maybe if you need it just into the defensive mode. Position is completely weak. And finally, after they go in seventh move instead of d6 for e8, knight g on e2. I like the flexibility of white's position. You, for example, black players never know 
if you're willing to go with a knight on f4, d4, g3, you just want to secure position of your knight on c3. That's the flexibility of position. If you ask me what should we do? Well, it depends. Uh, sometimes you play queen g3, bishop g5. Sometimes you go f3, g4, knight g3, knight f5. Uh, it also depends. Sometimes when they play knight e5, you play queen g3 and your knight goes on d4. It depends. So after knight e5, they're just uh, kicking this queen away. Queen and comes on g3. Mm, I'd like to make a small note. You always want to look for g3, uh, you know, like square for your queen. Queen on g3 threatens so many nasty things. Threatens sometimes bishop uh, h6. Threatens sometimes h4, h5, h6. Sometimes it keeps pressuring along the uh, d file and on the e5 square. Sometimes it just gives you bishop g5 followed by knight d5. What a nice uh, flexibility in white's position. And I'll show you now, once again, uh, Mamajarov's game. For example, a uh, game by Mamajarov played on chess.com against a uh, pretty solid IM from Akrivonosov. So d6, Mamajarov plays bishop g5. He threatens on the spot to win knight d5. He also threatens bishop f6, knight e5. No, in that case, queen h6 check. So knight e5 is threatened. He has to play either c6 or bishop c3. For example, if c6, you just play to stop knight e5 and to stop bishop f6 at some point, you play f4 and you break with e5. What a beautiful trick to go after like both of these uh, moves. So after e5, has to take. You recapture. You cannot take by rook because queen e5 would win the game on the spot. So I had to play knight h5. Queen h4 threatening both bishop and knight. And after queen a5 wins the piece. Boom. 15 moves. Uh, in the game, Mamajara Krivanosa was bishop c3. Knight c3, knight d7. f4, c6. There we go. Once again, we had the same position. And not just this. We had another game that went like this. Uh, Durabaili against Injic. Also played in title Tuesday. So after knight h5, queen h4, Injic tried, best Serbian player, tried to play f6. And after queen h5, uh, Durabaili played e6. And after f takes, played queen h5. And Injic soon resigned. And Mamajar, on the other hand, after queen h4, f6, took on h5, played bishop c4 check and played e6, and Krivonosov resigned immediately. Guys, can you imagine, after all these rile up as things, now these guys uh, come up in these rapid and blitz games with some uh, Vienna opening with third move d4 that has never been used. Actually, it was used by Paulsen in back to 1860, I don't know which, and he lost the game with white pieces in 20 moves. But this is now with all these engines in absolutely dynamic, you know, like approach. So this is fantastic for me. And finally, if queen g3, they just go with knight g6. Whenever I have queen on g3 and they have this knight on g6, I cannot be happier than this to go with the h4 and the h5. So I'll show you game by a young GM from Norway who in a recently finished European team championship got a GM title. This guy played h5. Is stuck his bishop on g5, threatening once again knight d5. This, in, in the case of c6, knight d5, you're winning. So c6 happened in the game. He played to stop, of course, knight d5. Played f4 to threaten both e5 and to threaten sometimes even f5. Bishop c3, knight takes c3. Queen c7, desperately trying to save his game. But after 2200, guy was black, by the way. After e5, knight g4, bishop e2 threatened the knight and stuck this rook on d6. Black was dead lost after 16 moves. Fantastic. And finally, in the case of h4, knight h5, another game by a leading player in this opening. Maybe Konkratov and Dubov were the ones who used this opening first, but Mamajarov is the one who used it on regular basis. He once again used it on chess.com, played queen f3 against the knight, knight brought back on f6, played h5, and this uh, guy Kim played knight e5, played queen g3, 
he now wants to go with h5, uh, sorry, h6, f4, e5, play d6. And you always use this um, ability to go with a bishop g5 and knight e5. Very nice idea because bishop is unhappily placed on b4. And that's most of the guys do because they're unfamiliar with the system. It's brand new thing. And they actually try to treat this like a central gambit. And it's not. That's the point. After king g8, you just break on the dark squares. Uh, they gotta go here, knight d5. Look at this. Terrible, completely lost. Put his hopes into knight e4. Takes on d8. Takes on g7. Plays knight g3. And king was lost. Uh, the point of uh, h takes g7 is if the king takes, he would just include check, save the bishop, and eventually take on g3. Why do I think this video is so important, even for good players? Because I just came up with something brand new extremely popular uh, that was used by top players such as Mamejar of Dubov and others. Uh, an important thing a note here is that nowadays these guys rely on uh, top engines, iCloud analysis, and here probably they analyzed it so deep and uh, they come up with surprises in 21st century, especially lately. If you come up with these kinds of variations, you are the one who's in the driver's seat. Hope that you enjoyed the video and Keep on following the content in this channel. Thank you so much.